Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein. This is Vehicle Virgins, and today we finally have in our possession the beautiful brand new 2020 Corvette Stingray. Guys, this car has been long anticipated. For so many decades, the Corvette was front engine. But no longer. In 2020, the Stingray is officially a mid-engine sports car. And that means a lot of great things for the future of the Chevrolet Corvette. So, what are we looking at here? It's called the C8 Corvette Stingray. It's powered by an all-new motor. It had the LT1, and now it's called the LT2. It's a 6.2 liter V8. It's been re-engineered that now makes 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. It's capable of rocketing this mid-engine Corvette to 60 miles an hour in just 2.9 seconds. It's got an aluminum chassis construction, double wishbone suspension, four piston Brembo brakes as standard. And what will all that cost you? Well, that's the best part. The base price is $59,995. That's right, for a tad under 60 grand, you're nearly getting yourself a supercar. And it's all American. It's awesome to see the Corvette transition from the C6 that was powerful, it was fast, it was cool, but it felt a little bit cheap. Then we went on to the C7 and they improved the design language, but there was cooling issues. There's no doubting though that the Z06 and the ZR1 of the C7 platform were unbelievable performance cars. But there was one thing holding it back. Yes, it wanted to fight against Ferrari, Lamborghini, and McLaren, but all of those cars for the most part, uh, most of their direct competitors are mid-engine, which means better weight distribution when it's mid-engine. It means different packaging. It basically means the car can go around a track faster. And now, after a complete overhaul and redesign, we've got a mid-engine Corvette with enough technology and presence to honestly turn heads to a degree that some supercars can. So first, we'll go over the styling. The car got a lot of flack for looking a bit too much like a Ferrari. If you look at the front of the car, I mean, it actually looks very similar to a McLaren GT. But if you really think about it, there's only so many ways to style a car when it's mid-engine. The positive is this, because the engine is now in the back, it means the hood is shorter. It means the overhang dips lower. It means you can see better from the driver's seat, which means you can place it on the track and the road more comfortably and accurately. Honestly, guys, I mean, sure, you can nitpick here and there, but from the frontal view, this car is gorgeous. And it's not just gorgeous, it's almost menacing and aggressive. It's got these crazy LED headlights that look like they'd be off something of a supercar. We come down here and it's got these amazing vents and splitters and little different character traits of the Corvette that make it unique. Now, if we come around to the side, it's also awesome. I'm gonna go look at the side of the car. Of course, it being mid-engine, now we get to have some flare on the side of the car in the form of a massive intake vent. If you look at cars like the Aventador, for instance, or a 488 GTB, we've got venting here or there for cooling, whether it's for uh, the intercoolers, heat exchangers, whether it's for the brakes or the engine, it doesn't matter. We've got a gaping vent here that looks really cool. Now, they've learned from supercars. No longer are there weird looking door handles. They're actually hidden underneath this vent. And you can open the door just like that. Now, I have some complaints about the rear of the car. I'll save those for the five things I hate about video in the future. But check this out. Something that most supercars actually cannot do is this. You can remove the top of the car and drive it like a convertible without losing structural rigidity, without losing anything other than maybe if you uh, made your hair look really good that morning. Honestly, if you're complaining about your hair and you're driving a Corvette Stingray, then uh, maybe get a different car. But guys, this car is phenomenal. And I can't wait to take it for a spin and show you guys what this thing is actually like to drive. Now, of course, I've got to fix the roof first. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go for a drive with that weird kind of air see i've created a roof scoop i've actually I've actually created an aerodynamic element 
uh, that would uh, in reality rip the thing off and then we would lose the roof. But uh, in my fictitious mind, we got air conditioning and maybe we route it into the engine bay and, and we've got a, a Stingray P1. There you go. So before we hop in the car, guys, new Vehicle Virgins merch. I'm super excited. You guys are giving me the best positive feedback I've ever received on merchandise from the quality to the fit, to the finish, to the design. I'm stoked. So vvgear.com, link in description below. That's vvgear.com. We got birds uh, chirping in agreement. Now let's put this roof on, take it out for a spin, shall we? I'm stoked, guys. This is, uh, I've been long awaiting driving one of these things and, and it hasn't been a better opportunity than a beautiful day today on my favorite roads. I'll see how she goes. All right, guys, so we're in the interior now and <laughs> To say it doesn't disappoint would be an understatement. It's actually gorgeous in here. This is the top of the line trim. So while the car starts at just below $60,000, this is the 3LT package for the interior, which means you get more technological features, you get more leather, it just looks nicer. There's different seat options, uh, anything from very comfortable seats to competition-based racing seats. There's options like performance high-end Bose speaker systems that honestly, it takes after luxury German and Italian cars where these speakers are gorgeous. We've got carbon fiber that looks nice. And, and as I'm sitting here, it just reminds me of what the C6 and the C7 Corvette looks like inside compared to the C8. It's actually ridiculous. Now, the steering wheel is oddly shaped. It's a bit sporty. It's kind of like a rounded square of sorts, but we've got these gorgeous paddles that I've heard, and we will confirm or deny later in the video, um, actually respond very well. That was a problem with the C7 Corvette. That automatic transmission wasn't all that good, but now we have an eight-speed Tremec uh, dual clutch transmission. No longer do we have an automatic. We've got a dual clutch, just like you'd have in a supercar. Eight speeds with paddles. Then we also have an eight inch display. So in order to get everything to fire up, we do have to turn the car on, but for audio reasons, we'll just do that later on. We've got an eight inch display here that has Apple CarPlay as standard. We've got a 10 inch customizable display in the front where you can actually, depending upon the drive mode, see different variations of the TAC and Speedo that cater to the correct driving experience. Then we've got this very unique uh, center divider here with all of the climate controls. You know, the only issue I see stylistically, this is gorgeous, is that with the roof on, it feels a little bit claustrophobic. You're in your own little cockpit here and your passenger is kind of hidden away over here. If you compare it to what Chevy wants this to be a competitor to, um, so let's pretend this is a Z06, it's not out yet, uh, but I imagine it's gonna have similar design language. If you compare that to its uh, Italian counterparts and, and its British counterparts, it's very, very tight in here. The cars might be similar sizes, but the McLaren, it's all this free space. Ferrari is kind of the king of making an airy cockpit feel where, yeah, it's small in, inside of a, a 488 Pista, but it doesn't feel that way because everything's kind of pushed away from you so that you only focus on the driving experience. But guys, uh, I'm nitpicking at small little things here. I can't wait to take this out on the road. So we're gonna go ahead, put my seatbelt on. I love that uh, we've got red seats, a red seatbelt. I mean, it's amazing how far Chevy has come with this car. It's actually incredible. We got a stop start button right here that's in this beautiful metal. Um, and just the fit and finish of everything is impressive. We even have a wireless charging station. We've got, you know, a cup holder that's hidden beneath leather, this beautiful leather for the mode selection, a front lift. Uh, when you put it in reverse, you pull back like the Lamborghini Huracan. So it's really awesome. All right, so let's fire this thing up. And turn the windshield wipers off. Or leave them on, I guess.
Guys, special shout out to three awesome fans. We got Tristan, Ethan, and Jake for coming up with this idea. They bought four or more items of merch, sent me proof in my DMs at Vehicle Virgins, and said, why not showing the support of your fans, giving thanks backwards to you guys for being so loyal that you went out and purchased merchandise from Vehicle Virgins. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna do personalized shout outs to every single fan that buys four or more items of merch. Simple as that. Ethan, Jake, Tristan, you guys are the men. Uh, awesome fans, awesome people. We're gonna go ahead and uh, light up the tires and let her rip. Here we go guys, behind the wheel of the new C8 Corvette. And right off the bat, you can tell how easy this car is to drive. I mean, seriously, anyone, regardless of age, anything at all, driving skill, you could drive this. You can drive it in simple automatic mode. Now there's a multitude of different driving modes. I was in track mode just uh, messing around prior to turning the cameras on, but we'll put it in tour mode. It's nice and easy, it's relaxed, of course, so we can swap into uh, automatic mode. Now, this isn't an automatic transmission with the torque converter. It is a dual clutch, but it does have an automatic mode that's very, very smooth and quiet. I'm noticing it's actually pretty isolated from the road. For a Corvette, you're used to hearing road noise and having it be like a very intense experience, but behind the wheel right now in tour mode, it's very, very easy. There's also a wet mode for obviously a high horsepower rear wheel drive car in the wet isn't ideal, but you've got a wet mode to handle that. Then of course, we're gonna bump it into sport mode. Uh, you've got this awesome controller here, and then uh, we're actually gonna put it in track mode because why would we not? Now we've got different display designs uh, for the TAC and Speedo that you can customize, and they're actually independent of what drive mode you're in, which is pretty cool. So you can be in track drive mode, but have the display set up in sport or whatever you really want. I like the track mode because the track mode setup um, is horizontally, uh, situated and it just looks more like a race car now the other thing i noticed right away guys is the gearbox is unbelievable the gearbox is actually epic in the other car it was a huge hindrance uh for a z06 if you didn't get a manual it didn't make any sense but this car i'm st i'm stoked guys <laughs> this is this is epic this is actually epic now, it's got a 40-60 weight distribution, which is a bit unique for a mid-engine car. I mean, the goal typically is 50-50. So it does feel, man, it feels good. <laughs> now, the characteristic trait of the car at, uh, let's say, 8 tenths is for understeer. And I'm sure they did that for safety reasons to make this car more approachable for uh, anyone driving the vehicle. But, of course, given the fact that it's rear wheel drive, a little bit tap of the gas, and you can mitigate uh, that understeer very easily. Now, steering feel is phenomenal. Steering feel is phenomenal. The brakes, they work well. Now, under hard braking, the car is a little bit squirrely, uh, probably because it's 40-60 and not 50-50, but they still stop the car well. Now, Chevy even admits the car slows itself a little bit uh, a longer stopping distance from 60 to zero than the previous gen car, but that's because of the weight distribution. Um, you don't have all that weight loaded up onto the front of the car. Well, clearly the next order of business is a launch control. I mean, how could we not do a launch control in a car that does zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds? So we're gonna go ahead and put it into manual mode and then go ahead. impressed so I mean no it doesn't accelerate like a 488 it doesn't accelerate like a 720s or or a Huracan Evo but the initial launch off the line is unbelievably impressive and and we have to remember guys the value proposition of this car uh, you can get a base model for uh, you know 60 grand 65 grand um, and you're really only adding five horsepower and five torque with the performance exhaust now, top speed, 194 miles an hour. It actually drops a little bit when you get the Z51 package. So what does the Z51 package mean? That is the utmost performance package that gives you that awesome uh, aerodynamic kit that improves 
handling performance and it lowers the top speed, but on the track uh, it increases, uh, or I should say decreases lap times. Now, we've got optional suspension uh, for just under two grand and it's probably, arguably the most important option you could get. Magneto Ereological dampers is what they call it. Now, how do Magneride suspension dampers actually work? Well, I'll explain. Essentially, it is this viscous fluid that flows through the dampers. And then using magnets and current and electricity, you're able to actually change the viscosity of the fluid inside the dampers within milliseconds. So the car is able to have tighter suspension or looser suspension depending upon the driving scenario, whether you're in track mode, sport mode, or if there's a bump. Now it's able to adapt, react, predict using algorithms to a degree that's very impressive, unbelievably impressive on a car of this value. In fact, the transmission itself um, is computer controlled to a degree that it actually preemptively figures out based on your driving style what they think you're going to do next. So it pre-selects a gear. So if it thinks you're accelerating, it's ready to go to bang into the next gear. If it thinks you're decelerating, it's ready to go in terms of downshifting. Honestly, that's stuff that you're used to seeing in supercars and hypercars, not cars that cost 60 to $80,000. Now this one is spec is 84 grand because it's got a lot of customization done to it. For instance, uh, most cars with red interiors have a red center console here. This was done in black. I think it looks quite nice. Uh, every single option from speaker systems to front lifts to uh, PDR, uh, track control, uh, where you can actually view uh, what it's like. And I'll put that on the screen and show you guys uh, what it actually shows on your screen and records a uh, first person point of view of you driving on the road, which is the coolest thing with these overlays. Long story short, the Corvette C8 is brilliant. It really is. Are there some gripes with it? Sure. I'm going to go over more of those in a supplemental video, but real briefly, despite the fact that the car is loud on the outside, I think it should be louder on the inside. Um, there's a couple more things, uh, some bigger things than that. I, I talked a little bit about the interior. Let's go ahead. We're going to turn around here, which is a good live, um, you know, kind of representation of what the turning radius is like. And it turns out the turning radius is awesome. Go ahead and pull that up like it's a Lamborghini for the backup camera. Unbelievable eight inch Apple CarPlay standard, even on the base car uh, display. Go ahead and pull that into drive. The only thing I do wish is that you could just pull a paddle to put it into drive instead of um, having to put it into drive by pulling that button, but uh, not a big deal. Anyways, less of the negatives. Let's go ahead and start ripping this car. And then we're gonna end with an awesome point of view combined with the car's own camera system to film what it's actually like behind the wheel of the car. It feels really balanced, guys. It feels like a really well put together chassis. The gearbox works so well with that 6.2 liter LT2 V8. I almost slipped up and said LT1, but the LT1 is old news. We got the LT2 now and it is redesigned in a way that is epic. Now, is it the most powerful fast car in a straight line? No, but name another car. Name one other car in this price range that offers this level of performance. I'll wait, I'll wait. Now, in the comment section below, I'd love you guys to let me know, um, what would you get? If you were spending, let's go with 70 grand, but you have to buy a brand new car, not a used car, because of course there's amazing deals on the market, particularly right now. What would you get as a brand new $70,000 sports car? Has to be two doors, not four, obviously. You know, you get an M3, um, you get something like that, but I'm hard pressed. I'm thinking right now as I'm driving to find something that's in this price range because you move on up to a, a 911 and a 911 costs a lot more, a lot more. Wow, wow. All right, I'm gonna shut up. I'll let you guys listen to that amazing engine. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is fantastic. This is actually epic. Chevy, you killed it with the C8. You absolutely killed it. It feels so approachable, so easy to drive quickly. And that's important because cars are kind of like weapons. If you don't have proper safety, you don't have proper training, stuff can go wrong. But this car has all the safety features you can imagine. All this preventative technology that really, really make it scream. <laughs> 
Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, time for the point of view.